Welcome back to School of Calisthenics. It is a Q&A Christmas calisthenics special. Does this one get a number or not? No, because it's a special. That's the, that's the number, number special. Number special. And it is Christmas Eve. It should be if I've put this out. It isn't right actually Christmas Eve when we're recording yeah, I, it. But it will be Christmas Eve, hopefully, if I upload it to the podcast and to YouTube. Yeah. On Christmas Eve, right day. So hopefully it is. I'm glad you've clarified that because actually, if it was Christmas Eve and we were doing this, I'd be potentially thinking that there might be more important things that I should be doing on Christmas Eve. <laughs> like wrapping presents. And spending time with family. That's the one. Go for a nice beverage at the local. So if you're listening to this hole. now on Christmas Eve, what Tim's saying is, is turn it off, go and spend yeah. some time with your family, Honestly. and then listen to it in the new year. Yeah, there's nothing well, that we're going to say that can't wait till after Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> well, possibly that's not possibly. Unless you're planning on training tomorrow on Christmas Day. Which I won't be. No, I won't be training. Christmas. I'm planning on eating quite a bit of Christmas. My first question actually to Tim is, coming on to that, I'm planning on, um, let's, let's call it a bulk of Christmas, <laughs> yeah. where it means that I'm just going to eat a lot of food. I probably won't even train that much, but I'm just okay with that, um, if you know what I mean. Um, You're generally okay with that, though. That doesn't stress you out at all, really. D- d- yeah, it tends not to. Because there's, like, Christmas as well, I want to enjoy... Dave is also Christmas. naughty because he'll pretend that he's not bothered about a bulk, but he's actually doing a huge amount of secret cardio that he doesn't tell me about. I'm not doing secret cardio. I did park run on Saturday. Biking. And I'll do a run. We'll do, we do a 10K run either Christmas Day or Boxing Day up at my wife's house. So that will go in the locker. I won't want to do it. But I'll probably eat a selection box for breakfast. I was going to ask you that. Christmas You're... Day. That's my tradition. I thought it was chocolate orange. Well, well it's, if I get a chocolate orange, but if I just get a selection box... Um, and what, what sort of percentage of cacao would you accept on Christmas Day? Do you, are you strict on that, or would you literally go for a boost of Turkish Delight? <laughs> yeah, <it'd be> like, <laughs> it, well, the disappointing thing these days, you get short change on a selection box from Cadbury's and other... Just a finger chocolates. of fudge, is that what well, you get? Well, you'll get, yeah, you'll get a fudge, you might get a curly whirly, some of the classics. <laughs> and like, but it tends to not be like... Back in the day, you used to get a full Mars bar, a full Twix, yeah. and you'd be, you'd, you know, you'd feel really sick before lunch. <laughs> Do you know what I, I sort of say? This is not at all what we plan on talking about, but chocolate is a good part of Christmas. Is I was in the, the garage the other day, and I don't eat a lot of chocolate, but I saw a Topic, great chocolate bar. I don't think I've ever... Had, a Topic, to me, is a bit like um, a double-decker. I'm scared of them. I don't... I've never tried it. Obviously, Snickers... Is the, is the king of chocolate bars. You don't, what, what has a Snickers not got that you would want in a chocolate bar? I'm not going to have a protein one. No. I'm Unnecessary. Just Actually, just, just have a Snickers and enjoy it for what it is. Don't try and get protein through your Snickers. Mm. Get protein from food. Well, I'm, food. And I wasn't going to do this this early, but because we've gone on to chocolate, I've got a little surprise for you. Something, that, um, something that's going to be a little bit more for, for the visual audience than the, than the podcast one, but I can talk about it as we go through. Are we exchanging, um, I didn't know we were exchanging well, gifts today, yeah. Dave. Yeah, this, Merry Christmas, Tim. This yeah. is, um, let's call it an after eight, but obviously I've been to Aldi and other stores are available, but they're, um, and it isn't full, because I've been <laughs> tucking into this a little bit. Um, but I want to see what you like. So it's a, like, think of it as like a challenge Tuesday. Oh, and it's, no, um, I knew this was good. Yeah. I saw you do this the other day. You're trying to get to put my forehead, aren't so you? So look, you, uh, so it goes on the forehead, and it's like how fast you can, you've got to wiggle your head, <laughs> the after eight, and you come down to the nose, and then you get it down to the side, and then you get it in your mouth. We just lost all of our podcast listeners. There you the go. Uh, well, but don't enjoy it. But for those that aren't that are listening, I'm now eating that after eight. Well, I think it's called a chukur <laughs> from Aldi, but it's that type of thing. So, Tim's going to have a little go. I'm not. We're going to talk questions. I'm not doing it because oh. it's, a vi- it's, it's a visual thing, Dave. And we've got listeners across the reply. I will enjoy your mint thin, which is <laughs> slash after eight. Mm. But let's talk okay. Christmas and questions. Well, I wanted to ask you, what, what's your favourite thing about Christmas dinner? Um, that was my... That's the, that's what the is your favourite thing about Christmas dinner? What's your favourite what's your worst thing about Christmas dinner? My favourite thing about Christmas dinner is, is stepping outside of what is conventionally provided for Christmas dinner. So I'm not a massive turkey fan, if I'm honest. Okay. So, and I like cooking. So I, I generally, I'm cooking at home this Christmas, um, but it's a bit, that's actually, we are actually having turkey, but out of necessity because a number of people are coming as opposed to anything else. But last year I cooked pheasant. Right, nice. 
And oh no, last year was beef Wellington, the year before was pheasant. So I'm a bit of a non-conformist when it comes to Christmas dinner. <laughs> and are you cooking Christmas dinner this year? I am. Oh, nice. But we're having beef rib on Christmas Eve with porcini stuff in. Talk to me about looking like Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> Basically got the same skills. Although I've actually cooked Gordon Ramsay's beef Wellington. This is, this is a tip. If you're cooking beef Wellington tomorrow, pin your ears back, because this is where I made a mistake last year. I took it's a not just calisthenics we cover. I, I love cooking. It. I took a sharp knife, normal straight bladed sharp knife, and then tried to cook my beef Wellington. But when I cut it, what happens is the sharp knife actually tears the pastry slightly. So it's good for cooked, cooking, cooking the beef, but not the Wellington. I don't know if that's a technical term for the pastry. Right. But what you want to do is actually take a serrated knife, right. cut the pastry, and then swap blades. So right. you then go for the normal carving knife to cook, right. cut the beef. I didn't know that. You do now? Yeah. When you were saying Wellington, I was thinking of boot. Boot Wellington. Like a Beef Wellington, Wellington boot. <laughs> Different. No, okay, that's what I was getting. I just you stick to the Wellington box. <laughs> <laughs> Leave your more advanced culinary <laughs> techniques to Gordon Ramsay's look alike. Right, a bit more. Available get... for bookings this Christmas, <laughs> yeah. actually. Yeah. If anyone's got a budget. Put a little bit on the side. Um, we've had, I've got um, a few questions come in that are nice. Um, end of year type of questions that I wanted to delve into. Um, and it is from, it was on an email from, I think his name is Stephen. And he's loving what he's, he, he's, he's on board with the whole, um, I'll just read you the first beginning bit of his very long email. Hi Dave, I trust you and Tim are well. We are. <laughs> he's uh, just discovered the stuff on Instagram and, it's, and it's, he says it's been amazing looking back at the, uh, the challenges and he's been really enjoying the, the his calisthenics journey trying to redefine his impossible so good on you well Stephen and welcome on board welcome to the school that positive feedback gets your question answered and uh, well we've got a number of questions so I'm going to summarize some of them but um, I want to start off with asking Tim what's your sort of like uh, at the end of the year and we're getting close there I yeah. like to reflect back on what's previously happened so like for you in terms of your callous your own personal calisthenics training what's been like one of the, because I, I can think of, I can think of a couple of things for you actually. It'd be oh. interesting to see what you come up with. What's been your like highlight, or what's like something that you feel like has really, like stuff's been hard. So it's not. I know you're yes. not going to say like everything's improved, but there are. I can think of two really good things that you've improved on this year. This year, yeah. And I was just interested. Well, you'll reflect back on your training. What feels like it's gone well? And we've, I've touched on this on probably some other podcasts uh, and Q and A's this year, but this year's been hard because it, my little boy was born on the 5th of February. So everything from that point onwards has been fairly well disrupted. <laughs> yeah. um, so I haven't really got much consistency. And I'm not, if I'm honest, at this, at the end, as the end of the year approaches, I'm not feeling in great physical condition. Now that is like lesson number one of the podcast. Sorry, yeah, fair enough. Um, just I keep the questions on there. The, so yeah, I'm not feeling in great nick at the moment and it has been tough. So I'm, 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 I'm approaching next year with a sense of trying to get back to a bit more structure in my training. However, things that have gone well, I've, dialed in a little bit around my planche training. Yes, that was one I was going to have in for you. Um, so I haven't got a full planche yet. My straddle planche, I can do push-ups in a straddle planche position now. And and, I'm, I'm and when we started four years ago doing calisthenics, if you'd have seen that and yeah. and said, oh, in four years' time you'll be doing that, you'd have said no chance. Yeah, I literally when I first tried to put my hands into that position to do a planche, I was like, how do you even ever think about doing that? But it, it's getting there and I need to do a bit more specific time on that. And I feel like the planche then, I worry with the planche, she's investing time in it is I'm not sure it's gonna be one of those things that sticks around easily without some maintenance work. I think the straddle planche, I've got in the locker. I yeah, can do yeah, that any day of the week. You did a lovely one earlier today even. Yes, I did. Just messing about. However, the um, the full planche, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's gonna be something like a handstand. I'll go and, I can go and do a handstand yeah. any day of the week. Um, the planche, I'm not, I'm not sure. So that's gonna be an interesting thing for me. And the, I think later on, because we were launching Strength and Play, our new ebook soon, that I should actually be hopefully be out by the time this goes. You should be able to uh, buy hopefully, it. Hopefully. Available on, on our website and hopefully in the future good book And if it isn't, then it just means we've had a few difficulties in the week before <laughs> yeah. and it will soon, soon, <laughs> soon be out. But check that out because we, and, and that has actually helped to encourage me to take a slightly different approach to some of my training because it's brought back this sense of we've probably got fairly well, and it's a word that I use in the ebook about entrenched down a road of looking for a specific movement. So just hammering things like working towards front levers and planches and all this other sort of stuff, whereas actually um, strength and play, writing that book has encouraged me to start to think about tight writer pull-ups and various other things which I'm having fun with and bringing a sense back of one volume in my program and two just 
trying to just play with things that are less difficult so that it becomes less stressful because I'm tired and I don't necessarily go into a session thinking, I feel in great, great uh, condition today to smash perfect muscle ups. Actually winding it back and just starting to pick out some other challenges that aren't as hard as that um, has probably given me a little bit of encouragement in a fairly difficult year of training. But I'm not yeah. keen to well, think no, that. My other thing I've got for you was, um, and it, it, maybe, it's, maybe you're not thinking about it because it's dropped in and out depending on how tired you are and how much trained yeah. up, but your handstand to tiger bend and back up to handstand yes. That's been um, yeah. that's been a good journey for you this year. That's yeah. I still don't feel that necessarily. I've got that quite as reliably as. Well, I only want. just because sometimes you want to like, but, but like, there's been times where I've seen you do it and just it looks yeah. just like ridiculous. But the interesting thing about that is, there's sometimes on one of those days when you see that it feels like that, and yeah. the next day I can come in or, or a couple of days later and be like, it's just not clicking. Yeah. And I, I worked out recently what it is that I do wrong, but it, it, it sometimes there's some stuff around fatigue some i don't know it's it, it's one of those variables but it is one of probably one of the most fun things that i do in calisthenics because it's just the sort of thing you look at and go, it's just it's ridiculous yeah. like you shouldn't actually be able to to do that um but it's a real nice challenge of that hand hand uh, hand balance and control that was a nice question actually mm. what about let's let's do that let's re I'll return there yeah okay, um I, I, yeah. I feel like i've had a difficult year in the i've had a few uh niggles elbow shoulder niggles that's lasted like a ton of time. Um, well, your elbow, when didn't you do it? Oh, Spring? In, Before it we in, filmed muscle. It was when I was feeling the best I've felt ever. I was, I was doing some like front lever to muscle up on the bar, on the top, on the, the high bar up at the gym. And then just one day, one time when I transitioned over, yeah. I just pinged and said, that was back in like June or say, maybe the end of May. I feel like that. Um, so a long, long time. Um, saw a physio and he reckoned 10 days I'd be all right. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> sent him a message about two months ago. Mate, it's been four months. Um, what's the news on that 10 day uh, niggle that I had in my, in my tricep? It's like the tricep tendon. But anyway, so that sort of, um, I don't, I haven't necessarily, I've just like tried to polish off, like my hand balancing, my yeah, hand standing. Is, is, yeah, right. that's, that's, I, what I don't feel like, I don't feel like I've done anything particularly new this year. It's yeah. just tried to make a few things a bit better. You've invested a ton of time in front lever training. Yes, which is yet to come to full fruition, but. Um, Making progress. In January. So I'll move on to, this is going to move on nicely to my next question is like, next year, for me, the beginning of the year, my front lever's going to look nice. Um, and what's the sort of New Year's res... And it ties in with Stephen's question. I had a nice question about, like, um, what do you look for for inspiration? And I want to tie that type of question in, like, where do you look for inspiration or who do you take inspiration from? And for 2018, what would you like to try and stick in your locker? That's a good question. Great um, question. That's why I'm Question Master. <laughs> you actually got better at Question Master over the year, I think. Started off badly. But actually, maybe, I said that. Your so phone actually, maybe, that's, maybe, that's, maybe that's the thing that I've improved on the most. You never see Michael Parkinson's phone ringing, do you, in the middle yeah, of an interview well, with yeah. Oliver Stone? He probably ain't got a mobile. Probably not. Um, so, crikey, where do I start with that one? Inspiration. I actually, I'm going to be a real nose. Yeah, I am sat here. <laughs> it's <laughs> Seth. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm actually, I've never really been like a, much like a fangirl kind of person. So like I see people doing stuff. Fanboy, you mean? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes girl. I don't know. Right. No, um, don't, 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 don't. Keep it, keep it clean. Yeah, stay away from that. Um, <laughs> one, uh, um, because I, I, don't, I look at people and I go, well, well, I think maybe I've learned over the years that like I'm just doing my thing now. Yeah. And like if I look at other people for inspiration, I just find it fairly depressing. So I know because I'm like, well, that your life isn't my life and your background isn't my background. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. It's just that I'm doing my thing and you need to do yours. And if you're yeah. better than me, then great. That's cool for you. But we've got all this other stuff going on. Um, so I, I, I guess I try and I know what I know what's out there. And I'm, I'm now pursuing the things that I find fun and enjoyable. So I, I like the idea of doing a planche way more than investing the time in doing a front lever. So I'll put it out there that I still can't do a front lever. I've, I've said it now, Dave. You feel better. I, I don't know. No, because it's been a long time. But the reality is I've been saying that, that I'm going to do a front lever 
probably for the last two, three years. It's something, that, and this year's been a bad example because the training's been disrupted and I might do a bit. And, and then that's one of the things about trying to learn something new, which is as hard as a front lever. Um, I have to put some consistency together. So I might do some work and then it might drop off for whatever yeah. reason. So I've kind of learned that to try and chase these, these movements is, is sometimes out of my control, especially when you're working on hard things. So the planche, for example, is something I can do at home. So that fits a little bit more into where I want to be because I'm, I'm just trying to put some more um, structure in. So recently what I'm looking forward to in next year is, is hopefully starting to nail down three sessions a week. Anything more than that is a bonus, but I'll, I'll share what my schedule is going to look like. And we've seen a little bit of research which has helped to guide this. So my focus and my, what I want to put in the locker next year is consistency and I want to get some real decent base level back and I might actually just be quite like to just try and put a little bit of weight back on because I think I've lost about a kilo and a half recently. So, and again, that's just from a number of different things. But um, one session is legs and levers. So working low body and focusing on isometric holds and that includes front levers and planche progressions and also that means my core stuff so dragon flags and that kind of thing that's yeah. in that session and then I have two push and pull combined days one is I've got muscle ups in there but after that I'm going to go hard push easier pull and then the other one is hard pull easier push and that's how I'm going to so I'm, I'm training in upper body push and pull muscle musculature twice a week I've got my legs and my static holds in there anything on top of that is bonus and I need to try and get some cardio stuff in but that's just really difficult for Come me. Come do part run with me. Boring. <laughs> and also, I'll be it's the not guy. Boring. You get to run with all these other people, try and beat them. Do you see anybody else running with a pushchair and a dog that is generally my dog weighs thirty? A guy kilos. with a pushchair ran past me once, and he didn't have a golden retriever that was and trying a to piss on. Guy with, with a dog on a post. Guy with a dog regularly runs past me. Yeah, my dog. Like when he when he puts the anchors on because he wants to piss <laughs> on something. It's thirty six kilos, dead stop. Like I've got history of dislocating shoulders. Yeah, that's the funny. next addition to that could be how do you dislocate your dislocate shoulders? So, oh yeah, my golden retriever yeah, after, decided he want to run park run anymore. After all of the calisthenics <laughs> training, your shoulders are now bulletproof. They can yeah, probably that handle that. It'd be a good challenge for it. So that's a long-winded answer around. Actually, there's there's quite a lot of stuff going on, but I just want to get some consistency back down, and I'm just gonna take it as it comes. Yeah, and well, what's nice is though, but you've got you've got a plan. You've got a few things on that list, and that you've that you're going to work towards them. I'm loosey-goosey. But, but yeah, but not being like precious over and just putting too much, like having goals with, a, with an end point and a time frame and they're specific and all those types of things in terms of goal settings, great. But sometimes it, we just end up putting too much pressure on ourselves yeah. to try and like, chase, like if we're chasing a goal, it's different to like actually progressively working towards it. I think that's the difference with calisthenics, like chasing something yeah. is not necessarily the right way to go about redefining an impossible because yeah, maybe it is if you can get to the gym five six times a week every week though. yeah but then but the chance of overtraining that then becomes yeah goes, goes you know high. what i'm saying like yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah but i think the thing is maybe i don't know whether it is or not maybe it's just admitting defeat because front lever has been on my goal list for the last few years and yeah. i've missed it so i've got to the point where actually put on the goal list and then not achieving it for the last couple of years is relatively it's depressing demon, yeah. so i'm actually just going to back off it a little bit and it will happen when it happens and it will happen yeah and actually the good thing is i know now i think we've dialed down and let's just touch on this a bit because right. we've seen a lot of stuff around a front lever and I'm going to ask you the same question yeah. about what you want to do. But one of the best videos I've ever seen for front lever and I'm being sarcastic, so just bear that in mind, is when there's like, we see people go, this is how you do a front lever. The first category of video we see is, I can't do a front lever, but these are the steps that you need to do. <laughs> well, okay, that's one thing in itself. And then there's all this other stuff where some people go, this is how you do a front lever, but my friend did front lever and he didn't use any of these exercises. He did these ones instead. And also these are some others that are supposed to work. Nobody seems to be presenting a particularly good yeah. recipe for people who don't have a gymnastics background, haven't done a lot of that kind of work before, a structured progression towards a front lever. Hence why we haven't, we're now refining we that. we have got four years of mistakes. <laughs> so <laughs> To refine to that refine process. That. Yeah. And now we actually have got a pretty good idea about what's working because we're yeah. feeling the gains and the, and the improvements. And once that. it's polished, then we'll put together tutorials that outline what we feel like is the is the most efficient way yeah. to go about that and we've got some stuff around the, the the science bit that you're talking about in terms of shoulder positioning and where we can create the most yeah. amount of force um, and that's one of the key things that we've been 
exploring recently that's making the biggest amount of improvement? Yeah, I've always known that from when I came into calisthenics, pulling was my weakness. I was quite good at pushing, and still that is where my strength is. So I played to my strengths in hand balancing, whereas you're actually much better at pulling than I am. Yeah. And you're further on that route. So again, it's just I came into calisthenics with my training background, you came in with yours. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, people that are listening to this would have done the same, they'll have their own stuff. So like if pulling is just not a strength for you, then you're going to find it hard to yeah. do something. Like, I reckon it's until you get into single arm pull-ups, the front lever, I almost think a single arm pull-up is going to be an easier journey than a single arm, than, than a front lever. Potentially, yeah. Because yeah. I just think it's, there's, uh, there's less things starting to have to work. It's literally yeah. going to be, yes, there's some shoulder stability, but it's brute force. Yeah. But I think some, so a good message for the people at home is like, as you said, We've both got different strengths and weaknesses depending on what we've, your previous training background is like and including that depending on what type of injuries and things that yeah. you've had. Two like, shoulder surgeries, that's not conducive to a front lever. But then pushing strength is where your yes. strength, like so your hands down push-ups and planche and straddle planche work like tenfold further along than where I've got to um, you can see that the difference in the size of our triceps. <laughs> Sorry, that, that's my, so my goal for 2018 is increase the size of my triceps. That, that's, that, that, I think that should be the number one goal in life. I need to for you. improve <laughs> and, and improve the size of my chest. Triceps first. <laughs> yeah. And then work with the chest. I got called pancake tips once by someone. It's, it hasn't affected me and I haven't remembered it forever. I never use it. You, Tim a slight. sometimes does. Only because it makes me feel better about myself. Dave is the only person I know whose abs is bigger than his chest. <laughs> Swallowed turtle at birth. It's a curse. <laughs> and a gift. <laughs> so go on, anything else apart from um, the triceps? So, so, well, no, so that no, was like joking. That's a joke. So, but I am going to do, I do want to get in, I want to dial back some of my pushing and just go back to a bit of, um, a, just go back to a bit of basics on that in terms of my vertical pushing and just put a real block in for, I want to put a good couple of months. So January, February is going to be not like, I'm going to try and dial back where I struggled with, try and dial back away from like loads of hard stuff and do a bit more strength baseline work. Yeah, a little bit of strength and play, but a little bit more baseline work. Um, like I said, front lever, that's going to come early. I'm just going to go hard at that because I feel like I'm on the edge of you are. that right position. Frustratingly for me. Um, yeah, and then, try, and then try and stay injury free. My number one goal for 2018 is not to pick up any niggles because that will have the biggest effect on my improvement across whatever it is I decide to try and work yeah, on. That's a huge thing, actually. I'm going to flip yeah. this into a serious conversation, but in, in the performance sport environment, we talk about that a lot, of increasing athlete availability. So athlete health with the English Institute of Sport is a whole department with full management structure and practitioners and blah, blah, blah. They, they put a huge amount of um, emphasis on that because if we can increase the number of days an athlete is available for training, we can increase performance it's it's so super yeah. simple we've got all this other stuff that which we like to play around with is well, how can you tweak this little one percent half a percent I actually just rock up to training so when we talk about taking deloads and rest days and deload weeks like that's so important so if you can just get to the point where you're comfortable taking rest you're comfortable with some regeneration strategies whether it be soft tissue release yeah. or whatever that, whatever works for you um, and you don't pick up injuries Happy days. Yeah. You're going to get better way quicker than overloading that training program by trying to spin more plates. Yeah. And, I, and sort of take home message for me around that trying to stay injury free is like particularly something I need to be better and more aware of. We've talked a lot about the injuries we started calisthenics with from rugby and I'm going to just mm. be clear about that rather than necessarily yes. getting injured doing calisthenics. I haven't actually really been injured since I started yeah. calisthenics. I've had and a really good run. I've... I've come, like, I've got a few things that are never going to change. So, like, um, I broken shoulder and dislocated AC joint that isn't, re isn't repaired. I never had an operation. That is just separated. Broken hand, snapped tendon in my finger that it has never been repaired because I chose not to have it done because I remember the doctor saying, well, I can play next week if you just tape it up and, it'll, and then, or you can have an operation and it'll take, you'll be out for three months. And I was like, what for my finger? Like, just leave it. But it, it's... It's a tendon that attaches all the way up into my elbow and it's not connected and then and a broken hand on this side. So like when I'm doing things now that I never used to do before in terms of like balancing my hands and that, there's a certain level of compensation on the floor that is going to have an effect further up the yeah. chain. And like my, I'm starting with my, I try to like do all this stuff, but my body isn't perfect because there's been a number of breaks in the chain, literally broken bones and snapped tendons that haven't been repaired surgically whilst when I was playing rugby we just sort of strapped it up and got on with it but it's left me with something that I need to like not ignore and actually just 
like try to manage as I do these other things in calisthenics. Um, and I think for people at home, like if you've got, if you have got some injury history and that sort of thing, you're getting exploring into, into some calisthenics, like don't ignore them, try to manage them effectively. And if something doesn't feel right, then you need to back off and not push yeah. through. That's, that's the biggest thing. Because um, staying injury free is going to be the best way for you to progress. Even if you're not doing the greatest progressions in the world, yeah, yeah. you can have the greatest progressions in the world. But if you start overtraining, get injured, you stop progressing. Um, I feel like so we've shared favorite. some vulnerability today. Yeah, yeah. some stuff out there which we've, oh. which I've been been harboring. But remember, it is a Christmas special, so people won't even be listening. <laughs> Mary, because you told them at the beginning to stop listening and go and spend time with the family. But if you made it, selection box. If you made it? it all the way to the end, well, fingers. Well done. <laughs> Enjoy Christmas Day tomorrow. I've try got, to have I've a, got a Christmas message that the Queen says. Okay, let oh, me finish mine. Try to, <laughs> try to enjoy Christmas Day. Try to have a day off training is my recommendation. Don't stress about it. And um, eat your sprouts. They're good for you. Okay. No one wants to eat them, but you just eat them. It depends how you cook them, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can see Gordon Ramsay <laughs> Jr. Oh, well. Uh, my little takeaway message from this year, guys, is we'll, we'll be back in January, but I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody who's supported us who's engaged with us. Like we literally set this up because people said to us right at the beginning, after we had embarrassed ourselves largely in front of the most members of our gym. Still do that. Say, yeah, true. Um, can you, the people started saying, can you teach us how to do some of the stuff that you're doing? So this is, that is where the School of Calisthenics was, was birthed. Yeah. Uh, we never really kind of set out to, to get to a point where we, we've got the community that we have supporting us. And um, we, I don't want to sound cliche and cheesy, but it's literally our passion about sharing this information with you guys is why we do it. Yeah. Um, and we massively appreciate the fact that you guys support us and we get so many like messages that, that is just encouraging us to do that. Dave and I, if, you've, if you're looking for a book over Christmas and you want to understand your better half more, um, there's a book called Love Languages. Oh. And our love language, according to my wife, is words of affirmation. That is why if you send, send <laughs> pairs of comment, a compliment, you get on the podcast <laughs> because... It's nice. It's nice for us. We like that. The other, others are like quality time and other boring stuff like that. But anyway, why are trying to we're quite insecure and it's, we like it when people say something nice. Exactly. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say, guys, is a massive thank you yes, from thank us, you. from Harvey, from Seth, from Lani, from the headmaster, Tomo. Um, we massively appreciate it, guys. And stick with us. We've got some really exciting projects coming out. Definitely got some exciting projects coming You're out, cracking. which you need to know about. Yeah, you're gonna, and I say thank you much. now, but please, when we announce them, in January, you're going Support to be excited because um, we need your help. And if you have any questions, whether it's related to how to cook your Christmas Wellington boot like Tim, comment below, whether it's about trading, comment below, and we will ask them in our next coming up Q&As. But until next week or next time, have a holiday. It's Christmas time. Class dismissed. <laughs>